Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Radiant Black Shortcast. Where this is a shorter segment where we're going to talk about the Massiverse and other related topics. On today's menu is the topic of just the 2023. Um, I'm joined by my friend and my fellow host, Matt. How are you doing, Matt? What's going on? Uh, yeah, just excited to uh, try this out. It's a nice little bonus for the patrons, right? We're trying to, uh, you know, pump up the patron. And uh, this is cool. This is a good little discussion we're about to have, I think. Oh, yeah. So Michael Basudo recently tweeted 2023 and uh, with it this image. And I just want to say, you know, when you look back at it, first of all, wow, what an what an incredible year. That is a lot, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in one year. <laughs> that, that's just insane. Um, one thing that I really appreciate when you look back at it, like just from a distance like this, is you can see the color palette of the Massa versus Super. Like it's 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 pretty wide. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hmm um yeah what did you think of this this was wild when i saw about it like i tweeted out the cheeky tweet of like when you start a podcast talking about one series and expands like crazy like this is the wall right like there's a couple caveats here like inferno go red right that's just that was written a few years ago this is like republished but these are all uh books that uh you know michael's been editing and the team's been working on and like moon man isn't out yet right that's that's a caveat that's not a 2023 book i see that in the bottom right so i just noticed that but like most of these titles are like december that's titles. the ash can so that, um, that one did go out yeah Okay, geez, so people, yeah, I didn't know it was on the wall. So yeah, uh, that's, <laughs> that's why I'm lucky you're here. But uh, yeah, okay. Uh, no, it's wild, right? Like, look at that. That's a lot of books. And I joked that like, <laughs> at this point, the Massiverse is going to be like a third of Images total published titles. It's crazy, <laughs> think, right? <laughs> like, yeah. But it's it's crazy. But these are all quality titles, and I'm glad they exist. It's just been a wild year. And uh, no, it's a tribute to the hard work that the, the Massiverse team has done. For sure. I mean, I, just looking at all the different genres we have here in the Massiverse, and we have all the all these different titles. You know, everything from let's go Radiant Pink, Dead Lucky, and Furgo Red, Rogue Sun, Radiant Black, um, No deep One, Cuts, yeah, Deep Cuts, Ordinary Gods, Shift, Moon Man. I know that some of these are not Massiverse covers, but it's still what the team, the team, the, yeah. the people who are working in the Massiverse accomplished. Um, yeah, take a bow, editor Michael Basudo. He's done an incredible job. I think. You know, when you look back at it like this as well, it's easier to uh, feel feel more forgiving towards the delays and everything because you realize, like, man, these guys are – that's a lot of books. They're working really hard. That's a small team they've got there at the Massiverse and even working on these other books. So just the fact that we're getting such high-quality books is, is a blessing in itself. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to Shift at the end of the year. And another thing is – if you're if you've been if you've been trying to get people into this universe or into the body of work, this is a good image to show them and be like, just look at the wide variety of, of genres available, the colors and it, when I say colors, I mean like literally look at all the different covers. It's not like when you see DC, a lot of the Batman covers are just like black or brown, right? Yeah. So it's nice to see some variety in, in how it looks and um, and talent yeah. and everything. So yeah. Yeah, uh, what is it, like 53 titles or something there? I, I try to do the math. I don't know nine times six if it's not 53. But, like, <laughs> but no, like, that's wild. Like, that, it's impressive, and they're still continuing. I think this must be the biggest year for Massive Verse titles, like the most titles in the year, I'd have to imagine. Mm -hmm. I don't don't quote me on that, but it's wild. You look at one book, and they're, like, super massive on the right. That's, a that, you know, that's what, like a batter book, right? And that's mm -hmm. just one title in the in the uh, the wall of stuff there. So it's really impressive. And like Radiant Black, they have like three issues are kind of doubled up there, but it's about the same that we'd get if it was if there was no delays or we just went as forward as uh, business as usual. So yeah, it's impressive. And it makes you appreciate the fact that for the most part, uh, if you look at the Catalyst War, every single issue except for 28 does not have variants i'm not considering cover a and b variants because they are two different stories but they're like yeah. in terms of actual variant covers there are none so if you were someone who was originally buying the variants now you don't really spend more money right like it's like you're spending the same amount of money which is nice and then the only issue that has variants is issue 28 with the walking dead covers they have one for each cover so to make it to tie into the whole stefano simioni walking dead uh artwork he did across you know connecting covers of each title mm. so yeah uh one thing i do want to say a quick honorable uh, mention and shout out to is the deep cuts over there at the massiverse i don't think anyone brought it up yet i've been a huge advocate of this title i really really enjoy it i think it's eisner worthy i, I don't know like even if it doesn't win eisner awards i think it'll get nominated for sure yeah. Igor, um, Danilo, I, I forget who did who did the artwork for the second and third issue, but just incredible talent. I know Kyle's been writing this with Joe Clark, and man, this is a really special book. 
you know, anyone who likes jazz music or even just music in general, I think can appreciate this book. Each issue is its own thing as well. So you don't need to like really be following from the start if you can't find any issues. All the covers connect. It's really cool. Just a fantastic series overall. But uh, yeah, looking forward to Moon Man, guys. It's on FOC January 7th or 8th, I believe. And it comes out, it's slated to come out January 31st, so 2024. So make sure you pre-order that book. And uh, yeah, if you're a Kid Cudi fan, you should be pretty excited. Yeah, definitely. And January 31st, that's the date where we're not sure exactly what's actually going to end up coming in on that day. Because like, there's like <laughs> three or four Master yeah. titles dropping that day. So yeah, you know... Uh, Either way, we know it'll be good titles, whether they come out then or not. But yeah, the 31st is like the deadline, the last title in January. But yeah, it should be yeah. good. And sh- I am really excited with Shift to see where that plays into the... Uh, I feel like I had that theory at the end of uh, the Last Radiant Black episode where we're talking about, is Shift going to be involved in the Catalyst work? Because we know there's a bonus story in that. So not only is it nice to see it collected, so you don't have to like flip through the image books to get it. Not that uh, they didn't have good titles there or good stories in that, but it's nice to have all of the shift stuff right there. Because I know a lot of people missed it. It's probably the yeah, most. Some people said it's hard to find. Like it was yeah. th- those books were expensive. They were like six bucks each, and they had yeah. a bunch of different stories, so they weren't heavily ordered by stores. Yeah, exactly. And I love the logo too. It really stands out with like the green yeah. light for the eye and stuff like that. It looks like you're driving. Like it's like uh, shortened terms on like the uh, you know. Uh, what is it? it's not drive shaft whatever's on the car i don't know i don't drive but you know what i mean but yeah no it's just really impressive and ordinary gauze is really cool too like a lot of titles in there that are awesome yeah well for sure um yeah so moving on our other topic of the day for this radiant black short cast is recently we've seen um tim seeley tweet this out on twitter saying the problem uh, with that is that everyone is risk adverse as hell on all. This was part of a long thread, so let's restart. The problem with that is that everyone is risk adverse as hell on all sides of the industry. Someone will have to take the hit and build books into longer series, growing readership over time, and unfortunately, it'll probably be the creators. Um, you know, this book has a lot to do with a lot of different facets in the industry. You know, from like the fact that creators, especially in the indie field of comics or subfield, they have to you know, almost be like advertisers for their own books and promoters. And that's really hard. They don't really teach you that. Um, there's a lot of things that go with it. You know, that's just a really like a sm- small simplification there. But one thing I noticed was that Kyle Higgins responded to this and said, we got this, Tim. And, you know, put a funny uh, classic gift there. The guy like typing yeah. his like arms away into nothingness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, know. yeah, like this makes us wonder. Obviously, Radiant Black is currently – uh we've seen up to 30 issues solicited and with the latest image comics solicits coming out the other day there haven't been any more massiverse books solicited except for uh moon man and that's not massiverse and uh, no one no one number 10 has been solicited so one thing i noticed and this could be an error michael basuto said it it, it it was an error but you never know is that this was the 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 Amazon solicit for the most recent volume of uh, Radiant Black, and, mm-hmm. or the, sorry, the most up to date volume of Radiant Black. This is collecting the second part of Catalyst War, which, as you can see, is 28, 28.5, 29, 29.5, 30, 30.5. So mm-hmm. that's up to the end of the Catalyst War, and it says coming out May 2024. But when you look at the uh, solicit, it says the final volume in the Radiant Black series. So the Catalyst War concludes both Nathan and Marshall are pushed to their limits by the alien force that originally forged the Radiance, but only one will do the unthinkable to emerge victorious. The Catalyst War ends here and the future of Radiant Black will never be the same. Okay, so my question to you is, first of all, do you consider, in a lot of, in a lot of ways, a lot of people I feel like in these days consider, especially for Indy, like 30 issues to be a long run. I personally do not. I think it has to be like at least somewhere in the 50 plus issues, especially yeah. since like if we're talking long and we're comparing it to existing titles, look at Spawn, look at Invincible, look at like those were all at least at least 100 issues. You know Walking what I mean? Dead even got, to like yeah. one, it got past the hundreds. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, what, like in terms of that, what, what do you think? Do you think like my question is, do you think? With you seeing this, uh, Basuto, I think, said it's a mistake. It could just be the end of Catalyst War. That's what mm. it was meant. But yeah. do you think that Kyle Higgins is going to, Kyle Higgins and the team at the Masterverse are going to end this after Catalyst War and do something like Shattered Grid with like Power Rangers, where, you know, it went on for a certain amount of times, a uh, certain amount of issues, sorry. And then they, you know, they, 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 you know, stopped it. They did Shattered Grid. And then that was the new series, I believe, or something like that. Or do you think that, uh 
like we're reading black is going to get reset at some point or are we going to continue and then that's that's the first part of my question and we'll get to the second part of my question mm. later so yeah well, he posed a similar, we had a similar discussion on the last episode of the Radiant Black Pod too, where we're talking, like, I was wondering if this, this was the end because, you know, Kyle said, and like the times we heard him, we remember he was saying, I've got like two, two years of story that I want to do, right? Like, not that that was the end, but he said, I thought about like 24 or whatever he said, it was about, you know, like two volumes worth or two years of stuff. And this is right around that timeline, right? Or maybe even three years or so. So it's possible, but there's so much meat on the bone there. Like you could do a spinoff of the post timeline. The, you could do what if in the radiant black universe. And I think there's enough to do two or three really interesting concepts there. So I'm hoping it isn't, but I feel like it is possible. Kyle has multiple things uh, going on, right? He's doing the moon man project. He's got deep cuts. Ordinary gods was another series he had going at the time. I, I'm pretty sure that's wrapping up, but like that was a really cool concept. So Kyle could move on, but I feel like, there's way more to do with this project. And I feel like it has legs. Like we've been comparing it to invincible. And I feel like that's not a ridiculous comparison. I feel like it could definitely meet uh, invincible. Cause if tech, if you compare the writing, like Kyle, like Kirkman knows early on, there were some things that he's improving on, even in the show. And there were some weaknesses in the comic. So I think like radio black is better written than invincible was. If we go pound for pound issue for issue. So I don't know. I don't think this is something you want to abandon. And uh, that's my 45 minute answer. Of, I hope not, but it's possible. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm more on the optimistic side of, like, I would like for him, like, I, I'm personally, I really like the idea of long runs. And I, I know Michael Basuto said before that, I don't know if he necessarily himself likes the idea of a long run, but I think, like, I think in a lot of ways, especially if you're an indie comic, it's a big statement, and it actually attracts more people to, to you know, to be like, wow, like, this is going on this long. And I've yeah. heard that a lot. And people like, well, want to check it out more. Like, I didn't know this the other day, but Undiscovered Country by Scott Snyder is still going. It's like 27 issues in. <laughs> I was just, like, really surprised to see that, yeah. to be honest. But, uh, yeah, like, I think that's better. And I agree with what Tim Seeley is saying here, that it, it is risk adverse in a lot of ways. But we've seen that Kyle isn't – he's a, he's not only a super talented creator – but he's not afraid of risk. He's putting a lot of um, equity into his own. Uh, sorry, he's putting a lot of risk, well, you know, by taking up into uh, the rainy black and really putting his own money into building this out. So yeah. you can see that he's he's really he's gone above and beyond, like with the animation, like the meet and C two E two and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like stuff like yeah, that. Meet the and greets. Yep. He's bath doing bombs. everything and more. Like I can't think mm -hmm. of a writer or creator that goes above and beyond more than Kyle with the bath bombs, the animated thing. No other the card game now yeah card game yeah like the ooh, there's so much coming the helmet yeah like there's just so much that's been done for radium black already and i think people are getting ahead of themselves i see a lot of enthusiastic like requests for animation and tv show and don't get me wrong like that that's definitely on the table but we want to get to a position where we have like matt said there's so much meat on the bone left we want to get more meat like uh, you know chew more of that meat you know digest it get out some good yeah. shit you know what i'm saying like because like we, we want at least like 50 60 issues at least unless or the entire series before you really go adapting it you don't want like the pressure of like continuing like the george R. R. martin style right you don't want that yeah where it's like you're still writing it out and they're gonna you want more material to, to build mm -hmm. off of like we know with invincible it's like hey you, we've got at least six to eight seasons that you could do for that show because it's all there it's all time tested but like i think you run into these issues with like a miles or a, a, a kamala khan in movies where you've only had these characters around for 10 years and there's not a ton of like I, the iconic storylines to pull on. So I feel like that could be an issue for adapting something too soon into another medium. So you want to wait and flesh it out. And I feel like there's a ton you could do beyond this. Like we're talking about potentially going to space or wherever. So I feel like you could stick with it for sure. These characters like Marshall and Nathan, like Eva, all these characters, Satomi is amazing. Like even like we've already done the spinoffs, which we haven't even mentioned too. So like a Satomi series, would be awesome just showing showing her time in prison and her story going through it right like there's so much to do so yeah optimistically i'd like to see the series continue for a while and i think it would like i'm i'm not trying to be hyperbolic but it would be kind of foolish to end it at the catalyst war unless it's like the like invincible level of ending i no, i agree wholeheartedly I, I think it would also be foolish to end it i think like ending it before if 50 issues at the minimum the very minimum is like extremely yeah. foolish it's just like you're shooting yourself in the foot like you get Look at firepower they get to 12 issues and they put like 12 variants 
If Radiant Black gets to 50 issues, bro, I'd be calling Todd and being like, dude, you're doing a cover for me, man. Like look, like you said, like look at how much of the image publishing line is just Masterverse titles in the past year. It's crazy. Like it's not a huge percentage, but it's a big chunk. Like it's a small chunk, sorry. That's which is respectable like for a new creator and and you know mm. his friends and his fellow creators like bringing them in and doing that. Like that's all Kyle. So yeah, yeah I don't know, man. I I think I think Radiant Black should really try to go for that 100 issue plus in my opinion like if you can get yeah. to 100 and end that's amazing but if you can get to 100 plus like that's that's like, yeah i don't know but it's like again you don't have to force it it's more or it should come organically but I, yeah. I agree with you that there's still so much that's unexplored like beyond just the main the main part of it right yeah if the story's there go for it and i know like this this was the idea though like kyle had the gimmick of not gimmick but like the hook of this of the catalyst war and two heroes fighting for it and all that kind of stuff like he had that as the whole thing was really basically like planned out, or at least he knew the roadmap to it to get to there. So maybe he doesn't want to follow it up if he doesn't think he has an idea that's as good or a good enough follow up. But yeah, I feel like don't push it. But if you have the creative juices flowing, definitely like keep this going because it's amazing. And I feel like it's a Power Rangers that could even more people could relate to as they're older because it really hits that demo that a lot of people don't of like people in their mid uh, mid third like early thirties, late twenties stuff like that and the way it handles societal stuff i feel like there'd be a big uh people would be missing out there'd be a big hole in comics if it, if it just ended yeah plus like i even remember how if we're comparing it to invincible we had like small segments that were focused on other characters like uh bulletproof or or um or monster girl or rex yeah. and it's like i think we can do the same thing here within or the radiant black where we can have small periods that focus on radiant red even in the radiant black title itself or even uh radiant yellow which we've had an issue focused entirely on him before and radiant red issue six yeah. and issue 18 i believe respectively and then we could do that yeah. again like there's nothing shift. wrong with that i'm excited shift, for shift. Yeah. me too yeah so bring back marshall school of business no, i'm just kidding I'm, I'm pretty sure if radiant black continues past 30 that that will be coming back so at least yeah. that gives us something to look forward to as well in the whole grand scheme of things there's just so much to enjoy about the radiant black a section of the universe as well as the massiverse in totality that we really don't want it to end uh like anytime soon we really think that there's at least at least 50 issues of material there to have fun with and i feel like if you really if you really wanted to and you got creative with it you could probably do 100 plus but uh, yeah ladies and gentlemen let us know what you think how long would you want radiant black to be ideally how long do you think it's gonna be uh is it gonna end after catalyst war let's let us know and we'll see you next time Stay radiant.